The central interceptor is a sewer pipeline uh, from the Mangri wastewater treatment plant to Western Springs. It's going to be 13 kilometers long. Because of its depth and size, we will be using a tunneling machine. So it will be tunneled from Mangri wastewater treatment plant. The central interceptor is a huge investment that will benefit um, Aucklanders by reducing the number of overflows when it rains. One way to address the combined sewer issue is to separate and build new stormwater pipes. And this has been a challenge for the previous Auckland City Council for many decades. The central interceptor was sort of conceived in the early 2000s, around 2004. And um, it requires long planning because it is 13 kilometers long. We needed to get consents. We are expecting the tunneling machines to be built in the next six months so the tunneling can start. So the central interceptor and the link sewers we're expecting to be completed by 2024. WaterCare is proposing to build a new underground wastewater tunnel for Auckland, known as the Central Interceptor. Wastewater for most Auckland homes, businesses and industrial sites is currently treated at the Mangarei Wastewater Treatment Plant. The wastewater flows to the plant through seven major wastewater pipes called interceptors. However, Due to Auckland's growing population, the existing and in places ageing wastewater infrastructure isn't adequate to support Auckland's future wastewater needs. The proposed central interceptor will remedy this. It will run from Western Springs to the Mangarei Wastewater Treatment Plant and will provide the capacity needed for Auckland's growing population duplicate an ageing section of the wastewater interceptor and significantly reduce the volume and frequency of overflows. The central interceptor will run for 13 kilometres underground and have enormous wastewater storage capacity. A proposed new Mangarei pump station will lift flows from the central interceptor tunnel up to the ground level, where wastewater will be treated at the adjacent treatment plant. The main tunnel will enter the pump station deep below the ground. From here, a tunnel boring machine will begin constructing a 4.5 metre internal diameter main tunnel. The tunnel will pass below the Manuko Harbour, about 15 metres below the seabed, at its shallowest point. It will then pass through two further shafts before arriving at the May Road shaft site, where a link sewer and a connection to the existing network contribute flows into the tunnel. From there, the tunnel boring machine will continue north, passing through another four shafts and a connection to a link sewer before arriving at the Western Springs shaft. This central interceptor will ensure Auckland's wastewater infrastructure is adequate to support the growing population for many decades to come.
Watercare is creating an important new underground wastewater tunnel for Auckland, known as the Central Interceptor. Wastewater will enter the Central Interceptor and its connected network through a number of drop shafts. Using gravity, these drop shafts will convey the wastewater down to the tunnel and all the way to the new Mangari pump station, where it will be pumped up to the existing Mangari wastewater treatment plant. Managing air flows and pressures, as well as wastewater flows inside the tunnel, will be critical to ensuring safe, sustainable and compliant operation of the central interceptor system. In normal dry weather conditions, air will enter the tunnel at three locations. Air treatment facilities at Mangare and May Road will draw air from the tunnel and treat it before releasing it back into the environment. This will create a negative air pressure inside the tunnel and ensure air does not escape from any of the shafts before being treated. It will also prevent any buildup of corrosive gases which could damage the tunnel. In normal weather, the Mangari Air Treatment Facility will service the entire length of the tunnel and Link Sewer B. The May Road Air Treatment Facility will service Link Sewer C. The central interceptor is expected to operate in this mode most of the time. In many parts of Auckland, there is a single pipe system for both wastewater and stormwater. When it rains, this means the central interceptor tunnel will begin to fill and the increased flow will displace air within the tunnel. The tunnel will continue to operate under negative air pressure and the displaced air will continue to be treated and released at both the air treatment facilities. If wet weather continues for a prolonged time, the tunnel at Mangari pump station will become fully submerged and the Mangari air treatment facility will no longer be able to draw air out of the tunnel. At this stage, the May Road Air Treatment Facility will take over the duty of maintaining negative air pressure within the entire tunnel. In extreme wet weather events, the tunnel may fill rapidly, causing large amounts of air inside the tunnel to be displaced quickly. To protect the central interceptor from the effects of excess pressure, emergency air relief vents will be installed at each of the shaft sites. This is a rare scenario, only likely to occur a few times a year and only for a few minutes at a time. As wet weather subsides and the tunnel empties, the system will return to normal, dry weather operation. The vents will be integrated with a small building at most sites and will be blended into the local landscape with trees and plants. So here we are in the bottom of the uh, main shaft for the Mangari pump station for the central interceptor. It's just on four o'clock in the morning. We've been on site since midnight. We're pouring 370 cubes of uh, concrete tonight. Uh, the depth of it, this particular pour is three and a half metres and it's between 800 and uh, a metre thick on the wall. Uh, the pause program for around seven hours, but we've got a little bit of time up our sleeve because we're dealing with traffic being Auckland. Uh, really, that's the reason why we pour at night. The 
this is, if you like, the launch site for our TVM. It's the very, 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 very start of that really long journey that goes all the way through to the city. What we're trying to do here, though, is we're trying to have a stable base, and it's also about durability. This is our micro tunnel boring machine, Dominicia. It's about 2.4 meters diameter, and uh, she will be drilling through the ground to provide the link sewers for the main tunnel. We have our on site mechanical and electrical team and they uh, work together and we will be assembling the machine on the surface, on the cradle, commission it before we send it down the shaft on completion and go for the launch. Hello, this is Dominica, micro tunnel boring machine, which will be starting the drive from Mero to Haycock. So this is our tunnel boring machine. Uh, this is how we will be constructing both link sewers, which will ultimately connect into the central intercept tunnel. This is the cutting tool which will be engaging with the ground and uh, this will be ripping the ground slowly and the material will be coming into the machine. Some of the other bits and pieces are required for launching the MTBM and for completing the pipe jacking. Uh, so if you look around, we have uh, interjack rings, we have launch eyes. The large piece of Lego is our gantry crane, and this is the, the way that we will drop everything in and out of the shafts. This is just one operator operates uh, the TBM. He pretty much controls everything from where I'm sitting right now and this is the controls uh, that he'll be using to operate uh, every stage of the excavation to taking the material out. 
you can see I'm 1.65 meters tall and this is all we got. This is where the TBM pilot is going to spend most of his time for the next couple of years. It will be very noisy with all the hydraulics operating. So it's pretty difficult conditions that we'll be working underground. Although we're underground, we're actually underwater as well. So Auckland and many other places have groundwater tables. So the problem is to put a personnel in there, it's like deep sea diving. So the chamber we're in here allows us to pressurise this compartment and the compartment up the front. Then we can bring them back to the safe space and slowly decompress them to make sure they don't get the bends. Just like the sea diving in the ocean. So this is our electric locomotive. So we call it a locomotive, even though it doesn't look like it, because it runs on train tracks. This is position where the driver will sit. He's got his pedals and hand controls here. And the other thing we've been doing, what we've had this arrangement in place, we've been practicing some of our emergency evacuation drills. Um, just recently, we're practicing getting an injured person out over the muck skip in the event that the train derails.